but uh, the something before Joe Robinson come on, but we have some young ladies, uh, Miss Valley's uh, girls, and she's going to come up and introduce them. <laughs> so let's give her uh, our undivided attention. Good evening, everyone. My name is Sakina Riley, and I'm a teacher at Salisbury High School who has been familiar with Miss Eleanor Cadenas. Um, and she's been an excellent resource in the community for my girls to get a chance to immerse themselves in jazz events like this, appreciate the arts, but also with poetry. Of course, I have to teach it in class, but I want them to uh, develop a passion and appreciation for it as well. Um, one like young lady who's going to read poetry for you tonight is going to perform, but it's actually part of her home <coughs> as well. So she's very excited to perform. She says, yes, that's two of one. So I've got three young ladies and myself, and we'll take about 15 minutes of your time, um, and then you'll be on to the jazz, which I know we all came for um, from the beginning. First up, we'll have Miss Jasmine Whitney. She's a junior at Salisbury High School. Um, very talented young lady, so I hope you enjoy her piece. The title of this poem is My Secret About You. I get mad because I can't go an hour without calling you. It's like some crazy magic thing that you do. When you smile, it brightens up my day. And when I look into your eyes, all the stress melts away. But dang, do you know? Or do you even care? Because if you did, I wouldn't be right here trying to think of these rhymes just to express to you how I feel inside you. And know and understand. You would take me by the hand and say, baby girl, it's okay because I'll be your man. You think I do magic on you? Well, it's okay because I think you do magic on me too. But you don't. You should know that when I call you baby boy, it's only a sign just to get you to be mine. But it doesn't click in your mind because you take your precious little time giving me a response and it eats me alive. But it's okay because how crazy would it get if things changed and not remain the same? So I'll say, I love you like a friend. But just know that when I tell you that, that I'm lying, I'm committing a sin because I love you way more than friends could ever be. I wouldn't mind you putting a couple of sweet kisses on me or even holding me or calling me baby. So maybe one day you'll understand my definition of friend. Because when I love you, boy, I love you from deep within. She's one of my babies. I had her since like freshman year, so I hear when she talks about boys, but the <laughs> poem's so good that I'm getting into it like, oh, yeah. Um, next up, we have Miss Bryce Ford. She too is a junior, very talented young lady, um, dancer, poet, songstress, performer, just everything. So her piece um, is special to her as well, and I think you'll enjoy hers also. Bryce Ford. But now I have, and now I know. There was me, the only one I need this whole time, switching off the damn light of our relationship so that my true beauty can shine. 17 years, I only had myself with me. Then you came along, and I forgot my true homie. I forgot my loving, caring personality. My almond eyes, my big head, and my daddy's nose. My loud voice with a lisp, which helped my words flow. So when you got the feeling to tell me how much I need you in my life, sit back, listen to this, and tell me who's right. My name is Bryce Sharday, 17 years growing, so heed what I say. My black is beautiful. My female is my gender. Queen is my title, so please excuse my language and my grammar, but I don't need no nigga. All I need is me. She texted me before we came and she said, Ms. Riley, my piece has um, a word in it. And I said, never. I said, well, if you use it eloquently and appropriate to the rhetoric, then she said, eh, can I? I'm like, yeah. So it flowed well, I think. And um, she too, very proud of her. The next poet is Tatiana Bailey. She is a sophomore. Um, I've had her for two years. And she's uh, very intelligent and well as well. She sings, she dances, she writes. Um, 
she cheers, she does hair, she's just excellent. And her piece will deal with um, a societal issue, and it was inspired by other teen poets. And when she saw their pieces, she said, new generational language. I gotta step my game up. So she's gonna show you how she steps her game up. Tatiana Bailey. A wise man once spoke of an old soul who wished death upon our people. And quite frankly, he had succeeded. We placed ourselves in makeshift castings, blood etched around its surface. The same blood that was shed by our ancestors years ago, plastered on the branches in which their swollen bodies hung from, paving the way for a selfish generation. We have submitted to subliminal mind control. And point the finger, we have turned our streets into slaughterhouses. We are the very weapons that God claims shall not form against us. Suicidal ammunition submission, forcing itself upon our people like a male, forcing himself inside the walls of a helpless infant, cries lost in conversation of the bullets floating upon the wind and to the hearts, wounded of our earth, cringing, tilting its axis until spiraling out of control. I remember when homes coincided with safety, the kitchen filled with smells of fried chicken and sweet peas giving families a common ground to stand on. Now distant memories replaced by the Pyrex remedies and cocaine medicine leaving trails of defeat behind to shake the ground that stable families once stood on. The garden in which Adam and Eve once grew fruit now holds roaming and boarding for weed, dead bodies and lost minds, peppered through the ground left untended for years. Afraid to look in the mirror knowing that I see the reflection of history repeating itself. Genocide, slavery now simultaneously occurring in the person sitting next to me. We are the criminals. Blaming years of torture, slavery, slaughter on the one that we have been forced to call master. But the master is ourselves. Every time we stand on the corner selling liquid homicide to get a dollar, we are selling ourselves short of life. Killing what we were once meant to protect, each other. Equality now has no balance. When we are forced to go to war against our brother, our sisters, our people, exploitation and manipulation of the mothers of this nation, prostitution is but another case of our criminal activity. A mother once whom have birthed you now stands on street corners to compensate for the lack of responsibilities that we take by men and we hide. So we portray a person unidentified to who we really are, afraid of the thought of being caught of the reflection of truth, mirroring our torn, bitter, vengeful hearts behind L'Oreal, Mac Makeup, Blush, Mad, Glocks, Games, afraid of facing who we really are, killers, the shoe soles of a generation before us marching, Fear in their hearts, cold, the blue-black bruised frame of their body influenced by hope are the same souls we spit and walk on every time our feet hit the whole cold, hard pavement, ill intent to destroy. Unconsciously, we have created a 21st century genocide, holocaust, slavery era, drug and human traffic, trafficking epidemic. This is history's repetition. Listen and petition. We can remember song lyrics, but we don't take the time to memorize the heroines that once tried to save us, all we have become statistics. The same freedom marches created to abolish segregation are the same ones that exist today, now in different forms. Which we discriminate against the weak, abandon the poor, and spit on the helpless. We have, in this broken relationship with mind control for long, for far too long, meeting him in the public place where we could once call home, opening our legs wide and sleeping with ignorance, conceiving a burdened nation with inaccurate precedents, to grow from we reside in the hell made by our rage, a rage that has only grew stronger. I too speak the language of a nation's anguish left unaided, bleeding, left to die, we are now witnessing a massacre. A wise man once spoke of an old soul who wished death upon our people. And he goes by the name of Massacre, discovering his evil plans through the sound of the winds, corrupted whistling, disturbed by cries and bullet sounds from which my warning has deprived. This is a massacre evacuation in which most have already died. This is a massacre evacuation. Try to stay alive. That's my baby too. <laughs> when I heard her, I said, I don't 
don't want to do mine. <laughs> okay, she really shut it down. Um, but mine is going to be dedicated to the jazz music musicians of tonight. Um, I dabble with poetry. I guess I would call myself a poet. And and writing this piece, I just imagine um, what would be alluring about a performer. So while this speaks of a poet, tonight you'll probably be reminded of this poem as you look at your musicians because they might put you in the same state of mind, me. I fell in love last night with the savvy poet. His metaphors played hopscotch on my heart and made it beat to his rhymes. The dark, sultry room we occupied became our boudoir, and everyone seemed to disappear. And he made love to my mind in the midst of the night. Unexpected, of course, after a typical post nine to five, usually cookie cutter evening involving girl talk at happy hour. Tonight, interrupted by this pleasant disaster, this lexical master who saved me from the pseudo laughter amongst routine complaints of trifling men and vows to never speak to them again. Now, I've seen a lot of poets whose use of English rhetoric earned them adjective or praises like, damn, he's sick, or unconventional compliments like, this dude is the sh But I'd never seen a poet quite like this. Highly coveted he was. I knew I had to make him mine. As the audience lay captive in his educated eyes, I crossed my legs and I crossed my legs and rounded my spine, rendering a peep at my mahogany thigh. He was the griot I hunted to find my roots, Nubian historian, intellectual, modern day Renaissance man in Timberland boots, political rebel Matulu. He was well versed, well read, well rounded, a scholar, accomplished, simply astounding. His words were unique, colossal his physique. Smooth his style, contagious his smile. I, jealous though of his might, cause next to her, she, next to him, he, she was looking fine. He whispered sweet nothings to her like I wasn't even there. His fingers danced down her side and he embraced her face, fingertips by the temple part, and seemed to stare deep in her eyes as he poured out his heart through his lyrical art. She, tall, dark, and slim. This chick was the competitor that stood between me and him. I looked around to glare at the crowd, avoiding any suspecting stares, fighting to maintain composure, enraged though at their affair, but my poet seemed skilled at pleasing the masses. He teased the crowd with illusions of current events, nostalgic memories and futuristic phobias, and every noun he would narrate, sent a kiss to my face, to the nape of my neck, down the small of my back, at the round of my breast, to the sharp of my waist. Oh! He reached the climax of his poem, and everyone listened in and hyped him up with snaps, but all I wanted was foreplay at a five star, where we could get it in, because in six minutes, the curtain was on. Well spoken, well received, well done, unforgettable, self made, simply amazing. Clenching teeth to my lips, I turn him a sly eye. Coy body language must have sparked interest. He perspired in that instant, and I caressed my glass and noticed it too was wet. He closed his eyes, and his poem reached its end. The room went completely <coughs> silent as he erupted to the conclusion. I joined him in his subliminal consciousness. He forgot all about his mic and extended an arm my direction. and. As the crowd went wild for his poetic message, I stayed seated and enjoyed the moment. He and I, the only two in the room, the only two to realize what just transpired, he stepped aside and exhaled, excited, elated, delighted. He left his mic stand alone. Victory was mine. He gave the crowd his mind, but I alone had won his soul. Thank you very much. And if you see any young people in the community doing positive things, please, please, please encourage them because they'll be our nurses and doctors and store owners and parents.
and neighbors one day. So we want to keep the healthy nation. Thank you. Give them a double round of applause. There's a lot of people going to 